You're watching News Made Easy. I'm Anandya Chakravarti, and today I'm going to be talking about a very interesting state election that's coming up this summer, and that's West Bengal. Why is it crucial? Because even though the left front was defeated by Mamta Banerjee 10 years ago, West Bengal is still considered to be the stronghold of left ideology in this country. And many analysts, political scientists believe that the BJP can never win West Bengal. So for the first time ever, and that is what makes it crucial, the BJP is within striking distance of winning that state. Can Mamta Banerjee hold on? Can the Left Congress Alliance make a surprise comeback? That's what we are going to look at in this episode. Stay tuned. Since the assembly elections of 2006, West Bengal has had very long drawn out elections. Um, there used to be five phase elections, then we moved to six phase elections, seven phase elections, and now this time it's going to have eight phases, the longest we've had through all these years. The elections are going to start on the 27th of March when the first phase of voting takes place and then the last phase of voting is on the 29th of April and then exactly one month from now, on the 2nd of May, we are going to know who's won those elections, whether Mamata Banerjee comes back or she's out. Um, Mamata Banerjee, understandably, has been pretty unhappy with this long, drawn-out process. And uh, she has uh, indicated that the Election Commission has been acting on behest of the BJP, making it easy for the Prime Minister and other leaders to campaign in West Bengal. She uh, pointed out that West Bengal has 294 seats and it's going to vote over eight phases, over one month, more than a month. And Tamil Nadu, which is 234 seats, just 60 seats less, will vote in a single day. So she's pointed that out. But her critics uh, also point out to her that uh, in 2011, when there were six phases of elections, that's when she was in the opposition, she was actually very happy with the EC for doing that. She praised them and said that she welcomes this long drawn out election because that's needed to maintain the law and order situation there. So at that time, obviously, she was in opposition trying to enter and become chief minister. Now she's the incumbent chief minister. So she doesn't want a very long drawn out election. So what exactly is making Mamta Banerjee nervous? To understand that, we'll have to actually rewind to 2014 and look at the vote shares in the two 2014 Lok Sabha elections. Uh, that's when Mamta Banerjee's party got uh, close to 39, more than 39% votes. And uh, the BJP did reasonably well. It uh, got close to 17% vote. The left front got nearly 30% votes and the Congress got about 9.5 odd percent. So that was a 2014 and the BJP, as you can see, did better than before, but still wasn't anywhere close to posing a challenge to Mamata Banerjee. In 2019, what happened? Mamata Banerjee actually performed better. The Trinamool Congress went up to 43% uh, of the votes, a 4% climb. But look at what happened to the BJP. The BJP went from 17% to more than 40%. That is, suddenly the BJP looked, uh, pretty scary to Mamata Banerjee. And how did that happen? Well, you can see what happened to the left front's vote. It went from, as I said, nearly 30%. It dropped to just 7.5%, losing almost 75% of its vote share. It fell to just 25% of what it was. And the Congress lost about 40% of its vote share and dropped to about 5.5%, as you can see on these graphs. Now, um, look at uh, it closely now. The difference between Trinamool Congress and BJP became just 3%. And I wanted to uh, make you understand this. It Obviously, as soon as I say this, you'll understand that this is common sense. A 3% gap is safe for only 1.5% swing. Because if the swing is more than 1.5% away from Trinamool towards BJP, what happens? The BJP goes to uh, near more than 41.5% 41 and the Trinamool Congress falls below 41.5% and goes to second position. So just a 1.5%, a little over 1.5% swing there can cost uh, Mamata Banerjee the elections. 
Now, as the first graph would have told you that uh, it is very clear that the BJP's rise has taken place uh, at the cost of the left and the Congress. And if I just compare the left and the uh, the BJP and the left, what am I seeing? Almost entire vote share of that the left lost went to the BJP. On the face of it, this was an amazing trapeze act by the West Bengal voter to swing right from the left front, the CPIM, to the right, to the BJP. Uh, is it because suddenly the left uh, voters started liking Hindutva? No, opposition parties and those who are political scientists who study West Bengal say that for this ultimately it is Mamata Banerjee and the Trinamool Congress which are to blame or at least they are responsible for this and why am I saying this to understand that let's try and understand what happens in rural West Bengal in 2011 when the left front lost power and Mamata Banerjee came to power she had to had to uh, try and uproot the left front's party structure from the villages because if she couldn't do that she would not have a long-term space there uh, but that was a difficult process and you can see that in the 2013 panchayat elections which took place exactly two years later about 11 percent of the panchayat seats in 2013 went uncontested which means there was no opposition candidate there which is not significantly high that happens in many states at village level in panchayat elections but of the remaining seats where there had been democratic elections where multiple candidates had fought Trinamool could win only 45 percent of the seats so now think about it uh, there was just one year left till 2014 and when we come to 2014 we see that the left front still has a significant base significant base in West Bengal because Look at this graph and it will tell you that when I add the left front and Congress party's votes together and remember they are in alliance right now, uh, then you get something which is very close, just a shade below what the Trinamool Congress got. So the Trinamool Congress realized, Mamta Banerjee realized that an alliance between the left front and uh, the Congress party can be extremely dangerous and we see that happening in 2016. So after 2014, and as the run-up, it came closer and closer to 2016, a campaign of violence was unleashed against the opposition in villages. Many people had to go away, leave their villages, move to makeshift camps. And you have uh, uh, evidence of this, not only just what uh, opposition parties were saying, but also you see that in news reports of that time. Then Mamta Banerjee managed to win. The left Congress alliance of 2016 didn't work. Mamata Banerjee came back uh, to power. And uh, we see that the process actually gets even worse. A literal reign of terror starts. And you get a sense of that in the 2018 Panchayat elections. Keep an eye on what I said is the un uncontested seats in Panchayat. Because that tells you that... Uh, Opposition candidates are not even being able to stand for elections. And in 2018, what happened? First, look at 2013. As I mentioned, 11% of uh, uh, seats went uncontested. And in 2018, that rose to 34%. One in three panchayat seat was actually won uncontested by the Trinamool Congress. And at that time, when we look at the results, this case went to the Supreme Court as well. And when we look at the results, we see that the Trinamool Congress won 78% of all Gram Panchayats, which is the lowest level, the village level, 87% of all Panchayat Samitis, the second tier. And then when we come to the Zilla Parishad, the highest tier, we get 96% of the district level Zilla Parishad Panchayat election seats were won by the Trinamool Congress. In Bengali, in uh, Bengal politics, there's a term that is used called Ilaka Dakhul. In Hindi, it would come to Ilaka Dakhal. In effect, taking full control of an area. That is what the uh, Trinamool Congress had done by 2018. And what it did in that entire period, in this huge campaign of violence, it effectively pushed the left voter to anyone who could give them shelter. And who could do that? only another powerful party and who was the only other powerful party which is the only other powerful party obviously the bjp with deep pockets and a central government and a very very charismatic powerful leader who was the first uh, um, 
prime minister with a full majority in three decades. So here was uh, Narendra Modi to whom the left uh, supporter, the left voter, the Congress voter could turn to and say, save us from what is happening to us. And that's precisely what we see, that people who were scared of the Trinamool Congress went to look for shelter with the BJP. So left and Congress voters who were not ideological supporters of the BJP's uh, policies still went and voted for the BJP because they thought that this is a party which can save us. That was the number one reason why that happened. Of course, there were other reasons as well. Trinamool Congress appeared to be corrupt and people thought that uh, the Modi regime was going to be more pro-development and it is less corrupt. So, of course, that's one key reason why people voted for him. A uh, significant section also were unhappy with what they considered to be Mamata Banerjee's Muslim appeasing policies and that also pushed some, especially upper caste Hindus, towards the BJP. Now, despite that, uh, the data suggests, surveys suggest that West Bengal is not a place where the BJP can win entirely on Hindutva politics. A post-poll uh, survey done by CSDS Lokniti in 2019, and that is after the BJP had won 40% of the votes there, just a shade below the Trinamool Congress. And the post-poll survey actually matches the assessment that BJP cannot win only on Hindutva. And I'm going to give you a few pointers there. That uh, when a question was asked that uh, does the Prime Minister of India, should the Prime Minister of India be secular? 90% said yes. 84% of the voters who were surveyed said that India belongs to everyone, not just Hindus. 90% uh, of the surveyed uh, voters also said that Muslims are not anti-national. This is a question that was asked across India and in other states that rate was just 75%. So in West Bengal, 90% said no, Muslims are not anti-national. Uh, and uh, those who voted for BJP, 60% of them said that the demolition of the Babri Masjid was wrong and unjustified. Now, this is one of the core things of the BJP's ideology. One of the reasons why many people oh, since 1990s have voted for the BJP. Despite that, the fact that these people voted for the BJP, 60% of them said demolition of the Babri Masjid was not justified. So you can clearly say that Hindutva isn't the reason BJP got such a massive boost in 2019. Uh, it was obviously the anti trinamool voter looking for shelter somewhere where there was a powerful party and a powerful leader. The question of course is that is Mamta Banerjee going to be able to increase this 3% gap between her and the BJP. Some people say well uh, state elections are different. Mamta is clearly the charismatic leader there and even if uh, the Prime Minister comes and campaigns there, people know that he's not going to be the Chief Minister. And West Bengal, in West Bengal, uh, the BJP doesn't really have a, a credible Chief Ministerial face. Uh, but the question is that, has the BJP got the momentum required to topple Mamata Banerjee? In 2019, 40%. Does that mean that there are many others who would have voted for the BJP but thought that it cannot win, right? Will they now come and vote for uh, Mamta ba uh, for the BJP and help it move above Mamta Banerjee or is there a chance that in these two years many people who voted for the BJP are likely to go back to the left front and Congress alliance is it possible that left front's alliance with the ISF uh, the so-called Indian secular front um, is going to help it gain back some of the Muslim votes that is a very interesting thing to look at. In fact, uh, we'll know what happens in just a couple of months. Not too long to know that.